Hello, this is Mike at Game from Scratch, and welcome to the next episode of the Ongoing Game Dev Toolbox series. Now, this is a look at the essential tools for game development, be it for programmers, artists, audio technicians, designers, etc. All facets of game development are covered, and today we are looking at a code editor called Visual Studio Code. Now, right off the hop, that name is a little bit misleading. Visual Studio Code, you think Visual Studio, um, Microsoft's, you know, Windows-only IDE, and this has nothing to do with that. Um, it is a Microsoft project, but it's completely open source and cross-platform. This is a lightweight code editor. Uh, in fact, it's based on um, Chromium Embedded and the V8 JavaScript engine. Those things go together. They were used in a product called um, Electron made by GitHub, which they in turn used to make their own editor called Atom. Atom and Visual Studio Code share no code. They just share a lot of the underlying technologies together. And Visual Studio Code, as I mentioned earlier, is a cross-platform um, code editor. So Microsoft make it available for Windows 7, 8, and 10, uh, Debian, Ubuntu, Red Hat, Fedora, CentOS, and then Mac OS 10.x. So we've basically got all of the major um, development operating systems that people use today are fully supported here. And there are very frequent releases of this guy. So it is a very cross-platform and a nice thing for, in my opinion, it's lightweight. I like that I can quickly, uh, you know, spin it up, so I just code, boom, there it is. And this is Visual Studio Code. Now, when it was released, this was all about HTML, JavaScript, and TypeScript editing. And over time, it's gotten more language support. But here you can see a um, HTML5 project in action. And if we come in here, you'll see the traditional things that you should expect from an editor. So we've got you know uh, code suggestions going on here. So we're gonna grab our canvas. Uh, dot and then uh, control space and you've got your uh, IntelliSense completion. You've got the ability to bring in TypeScript bindings, etc. So if you just need a lightweight HTML5 code editor or JavaScript code editor or TypeScript code editor, Visual Studio fits that, uh, Visual Studio Code fits that niche. Now on top of that, there is a lot more going on here. Right here you can see we've got your traditional uh, file management, file layout, etc. We can create new files, create new directories, um, Etc. We've got a lot of control. We can toggle that back down like so. And then your main editing space, as you can see right here, the, your code editor, we've got um, tab support across the top. You've got syntax highlighting as you would expect. Uh, you've got code folding as you would probably expect as well. Uh, you've got the ability using control plus and control minus to uh, zoom in and out, which is nice for people like me that actually do you know, um, presentations or, or video tutorials like this. So you can make your code more readable or legible uh, when doing presentations and such. Uh, but everything you would generally expect in a code editor is here. Now on top of that, we've got the ability, this guy right here, and we can infinitely split. So we've got tabbed editing over here, and we've got a new tab over here. We could change the contents of this particular window, and we can keep splitting. So we can make you know three, four, five, however many you need side by side, you can have them. Then at the same time, you can easily get rid of them like so. So it's very code focused. The editor is nice and complete there. Now, next thing we got here is your traditional find options. Now it's a little bit more advanced than that. You've got case matching, your whole word matching. And then on the top here, we've also got the ability to use regular expressions. So you can do quite a bit of searching. Uh, you can do a replace down here, as you can see here. Uh, we can do some advanced settings here, etc. So you can mask out certain files, certain um, files exclusion, files searched by. And then again, you can here is use patterns to match it. So your searching is quite powerful and directly built in. Again, that can be easily toggled off. Now next up here, we've got Git integration. So if you are using source control, uh, this particular guy isn't. So if I wanted to turn this project into a Git repository, I could do so right here. If this was already a Git repository, I could use this for uh, checking in, syncing my changes, etc. And then next up, we've got um, the ability to debug. So in this case, this guy is set up to use Chrome as a debugger. I'm going to look at some of the debugging options in a second. Uh, but you can have it launch out to uh, debug. You can set up uh, variables, watch list. You can see the call stack. Um, and of course, you can you know set to your code over here. And I believe I can set my breakpoints this way as well. Um, so you do have full debugging support out of the box for uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, etc. Now that isn't where it ends though, because the next thing we're gonna get into, and this is what really makes Visual Studio shine, is the extension. So you can see here, I've got a couple installed. Um, I've got C Sharp installed, uh, Debugger for Chrome installed, and Express installed. And Express is a uh, node powered or JavaScript powered uh, web server. So a lot of times when you're working with an HTML document, for example, uh, there are some things that don't work right if you run it from file. So if you run it from file colon slash slash, you, um, XHR stuff, cross domain stuff won't work right. So what you want to do there is often host it in a web, develop, um, a web server. And that's what this extension, for example, allows me 
to do. So if I hit Control Shift P, a very important thing, brings up the palette, which is this guy. And here's where you can start seeing some of the functionality built into Visual Studio Code. So you can see here, we got the various different code options. So like add a line comment, so Control K, Control C. So if I wanted to Control K, Control C, I just commented that line out. I believe it toggles back and forth. So as you can see, those are your particular um, different hotkeys for code editing, etc. cetera. Uh, we've got a lot of different options here. And you know we got our debugging options. So here, if you can disable all breakpoints, enable all breakpoints, start debugging, start without debugging, uh, etc. So you got a lot of control over various different things. So in this case, what I've done is I've installed this Express guy. So if we come down here, we will find Express, and we can do things like uh, host current workspace, host current workspace, and open in browser. What this will do is create um, a web server for us, and then open it up in the browser, which is exactly what I'm going to do. There you go. So there we are now running our code in a web server hosted inside of Visual Studio Code. You can see that the requests uh, down here that are actually going to said server. And so that's the kind of things that extensions can be used for. And they're quite powerful. They are very uh, cool, capable stuff here. Now, if I want to close down my server, I can. So here we are back in the extensions. I'm going to come here. And I'm going to show you some of the more popular extensions for Visual Studio Code. And number one is C Sharp. I've actually shown it in another video. If you use um, CLR.net, uh, the, the CLR core. Uh, you can do um, C Sharp development directly in this guy, including full debugging, IntelliSense support, etc. But it doesn't just end at Microsoft languages. You see right here, the second most popular here is full Python. And there aren't many good Python editors out there. So that's definitely nice to see. Here's the debugger for Chrome, which enables you to run your code directly in Chrome. Um, C++ support can be added. Uh, ES or um, ECMA script linting can be done directly inside. Uh, useful HTML5 snippets, Go programming, uh, code beautifier. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll add that one in, for example. So beautify is coming down. Uh, it, it was now installed, and I'll go ahead and reload it. So this will make that. Uh, don't save. This will now make that plugin uh, active now that it's rerun. So you see now Beautify is available here and I'll just go up to my palette, Control Shift P, Beautify file. And there you saw it went through quickly, you know, um, cleaned up my tabbing, made everything consistent, made everything pretty, etc. So that's a typical code beautifier. And this is, the extensions, is really where Visual Studio Code shines. So, so you can turn Visual Studio into just about whatever you want. Um, so we'll come back in here again, look at the uh, most popular again, keep going down through this list. So we got uh, PowerShell, Angular 2, TS Lint or TypeScript linting, uh, ES6 code, we've got Git history or Git log support, Vim. So if you're, you're an old school Vim developer, you can turn on Vim emulation. Um, CSS class completion, C++ IntelliSense, uh, Bootstrap Ruby language support, PHP code formatting, uh, Magic Python support, um, another project manager if you wish. Um, Etc. So you can see you've got all of these uh, extensions and they just keep going and going and going and going and going. And you've got just about everything you want in here. Now the neat thing is I can do things like uh, embed a web browser directly in here. So if I had do help documentation I wanted to bring up, I could run it over here using a plugin. I can uh, bring in Bower support, for example. I can bring in just about any kind of thing I want. I can also bring in a markdown editor with real-time feedback. So these these extensions are what makes Visual Studio Code really shine. And I think that is the biggest reason why I'd say recommend it. And on top of that, it's more accessible. Um, so you'd find like Sublime Text has very similar functionality. But I find, say, for example, using their package manager to bring in an extension, it's just more of a convoluted and error. Whereas the way Visual Studio Code seems to do it, it's just easier, cleaner. Um, I don't know. I just like it better for the most part. Now, again, Editors come down to a lot of personal preference and a lot of you know bias, and I'm not going to try and push my code editor of choice on you. But Visual Studio Code is my general purpose code editor. Now, for you know, example, HTML5 development for a more complex project, I still use WebStorm. For C++, I often still use Visual Studio, even C Sharp, for example. But if I'm just working on small, just about anything, I get in there and use this guy. So Visual Studio Code is my modern day notepad or small to medium project kind of go to. And you'll see here there are a lot of tools that you know Unity tools are integrated right in here. So this is is um, a very well adopted project. There are people making extensions for it for just about everything. And the nice thing is, since they are extensions, they aren't bloating up the product itself. So this isn't a slow 
uh, IDE. It's still fast, it's still responsive, but as you want to add more functionality, you can. And really, that's about it. There's you know a lot, a lot to it. It's a code editor with a lot of functionality you would expect. Again, remember the Command Shift P or Control Shift P. Yeah is your palette, and this is essentially the heart, and this is where all your various commands are, various hotkeys, all the stuff you can do here um, is here. So you can also get into, I believe there's some pretty good refactoring out of the box, and then you can also add more in, you can embed a terminal directly inside of here. You can actually do a lot of the old school Emacsy stuff. It feels a bit like a modern day cleaner, easy to use Emacs. And that is a cool thing, in my opinion. So this has been Visual Studio Code, completely free, completely cross-platform, completely open source, uh, lightweight, but powerful and extensible code editor. And if you haven't you know, discovered your personal religion yet for code editing, I do recommend you check out Visual Studio Code. Ignore the Visual Studio part, ignore the Microsoft part. Microsoft is a different company than they were years ago. This is not an embrace and extend and extinguish type scenario. This isn't a Trojan horse. This is a focused code tool code tool for developers that just works. There's no real ulterior motive here. Uh, so don't worry, you don't need to fear the evil empire. There is nothing to fear here. It is a great open source tool that has been embraced by a variety of different communities. And you'll see that when you see the extensions that are available for it. And it's staggering the amount of extensions that are available for it. So regardless to what language, and hell, there's Swift, which is a, an um, Apple only language uh, supported right here. So I do recommend you check this guy out. It's a great little editor. If you haven't used it yet, do give it a shot. The learning curve is uh, basically control shift P and you can figure out everything else from there. Uh, it's a cool tool. I do recommend you check it out. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do click like. And of course, all kinds of game development stuff on this channel from tool reviews to tutorials, etc. And if you want to hear all about them, please do click subscribe. And if there is a tool that you actually think I should feature in the toolbox series, please do let me know. Um, this is an open edit series. I'm going to be covering just about every tool I find useful over time. So uh, there's no real rhyme or reason why something gets added here other than the fact that it is useful and I think game developers will find it useful and generally I like to veer towards the more affordable products when I can help it uh, so if you do have a suggestion do let me know down below and uh, yeah that's about it see y'all later goodbye